Good evening, Gabby Cabby. Good evening, TC, and welcome all to our weekly podcast, The Current View, with the Order of Hillsborough and Mr. Terry Curran. If you're listening to the free half on either iCast or Spotify, you can follow the links on the socials and access the full podcast via either Apple or Patreon. Become a Patreon. It helps us greatly. All the W's dot patreon.com forward slash SRB Media. Follow us on Twitter at Current View or on Facebook, The Current View, and the group is over 3,000 strong. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. How are you? Steady away. I love it when you say that, TC. Steady away. <laughs> what a start to the podcast and what a week it's going to be. We're going to be finished on the football forecast and it is a big football forecast this week because the Playoff game starts Friday. Absolutely. And on Thursday, we've got Wickham versus MK Dons. So we're going to touch upon both of those. But TC, first and foremostly, what we always do is start with the magic moments. And what have you sourced for us this week? I don't know why we do this magic moment because we both pick a magic moment, but there must be 100. There must be 100 magic moments. Not with, I mean, not only with goals, but with uh, performances of teams. Uh, goals from other players, uh, passes what split uh, defenses open, uh, and goalkeeper saves. There's many, there's many, but I'm going for the song goal, his second goal against uh, Leicester. You know, um, I was speaking with Tom in Cowell the other day, Tom was on about him. He is some hell of a player, isn't he? You know, yes, uh, and I agree with Tom. I, I mean, Tottenham is a big club, I don't think our Thomas realized it is a big club, Tottenham, but. I get it because it's the elite clubs what play in Europe or the Champions League, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it. Um, but Tottenham is a big club, but I am surprised that one of the elite uh, champions uh, teams hasn't gone and tried to sign him. Yeah, he's fantastic. I heard because I was working over the weekend. I heard Sonny had scored a great goal, and I, I thought, right, I've got to watch Tottenham. And I saw his first goal, and I thought, yeah, you're right. What a goal! What a spin! And what a what a great goal! And then I thought, oh my god, that second goal he scored. I mean, what a sensational! And that touch that just took it away. And he just curled it. It was just sublime. And you're right. I think he is an absolutely fabulous player. I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. And he's been injured what, quite a bit as well, hasn't he? And he's still scored yeah, 19 I goals. Think that's what Tom, I think that's what Tom uh, was trying to say. He didn't get the credit. Because it's always Harry Kane, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. But that's typical. That's mm-hmm. typical of British, uh, the British press or the English press. You know, um, Kane's a natural goal scorer. Make no mistake on it. But... Uh, Son is is one hell of a player. One hell of a player. Do you think? I mean, we had this conversation um, on Sunday, uh, Tom and I, and Tom come out. I thought it was a very valid point. And he says, "Do you think he doesn't get the re- you know the recognition because he's South Korean? And if he was Brazilian, Spanish, or Italian, he'd get a lot more press." And I thought, you know what? I think you've got a point. Because South Korea aren't noted really for the football, whereas uh, Argentina and Brazil and all the bigger countries are. And I think that when we look at goals being scored by other players, we say, blimey, if Messi or Ronaldo would have scored that, we wouldn't have heard the last of it. And I get where you're coming from, mm. but there's one thing, you see, what, what happened, what's happened over these last 10 to 15 years, they knew there's a big market yeah. out, out in the uh, <coughs> Uh, yeah. So they started to fetch fetch these players in, mm-hmm. uh, but he he the guy the the so, uh, song at, was it song at uh, Man United, G- Jung, G- Park. G- Park. G- Park. Yeah, yeah. Uh, w- was a top player, but this kid, yeah, is the best I've seen from the Far East without any question of a doubt. Um, <laughs> it's just a Tottenham, a Tottenham, they're a bit miss, aren't they? Yes, they are. Very much so. The, who they have as a manager, the bit yeah. miss. Yeah. You know, again, um, it's not that I'm being critical to, to Daniel Levy because it, money-wise, he's generated a load of money for that football club. Yeah. But they squandered a lot of money on, on, on not bad players, but on uh, players what's not mm. been uh, capable of getting them into Champions League on a regular basis. Uh, so that's down to... Um, 
Daniel Lee because it's him who, who signed these players. Yeah, they seem, but, they uh, seem to go for a certain type. Instead of going and shopping, we've got a shop, well, we've got a shop, um, Rackham's in Birmingham, uh, which is the house of Fraser, which is similar to Arrods, but Arrods isn't much greater. I don't know what you've got up there at Sheffield. But, you know, you've got levels of shopping, haven't you? I don't you know, know what we've got up here. Uh, little or Aldi, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, I think that's where Daniel Lee is going for his players <laughs> instead of going to uh, I mean, one of them. Man United's been <laughs> little or Aldi's. I think you're right, Jason. I but think going, both going, their going recruitments back, are poor. Yeah, going back to to Son, mm. if they'd been in Champions League and going for and going for titles, I think he would have got he would have got the the recognition he yeah. deserves. He still deserves it. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But you know, look, football. Well, f- football was still here before the champ- before the uh, Premier League. Everybody's obsessed with the Premier League. Yeah. You know, well, I think what's, what's many, uh, everyone obsessed with it is the amount of money. It's become like a, the footballers have now become the pop stars like the pop stars were in, in, in my day when I was playing football. Yet the pop stars still wanted to be footballers. I think pop stars want to be footballers. Footballers were the pop stars. The difference is now every game's on the TV and there's so much more uh, attention to the players. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Whereas in your Social day, media. yeah, it was just the FA Cup final, wasn't it? And you get the odd international that England were playing or a World Cup. And even the Euros really wasn't a big thing back nope. in the early 80s. I can't even remember a Euros in the 70s, if I'm absolutely honest. I know that England played a Nations League game because that's what it was called then in 72 against West Germany when Gunter Netzer ripped us a new one. But apart from that, we didn't really... The, it hadn't got the kudos that it has today. Well, and the I World think, Cup. The World Cup was a big one. Absolutely. Yeah. The old internationals then. Yeah. It used to be... Because at the end of the season, yeah. everybody used to love to watch them because obviously yeah. the kicking used to get between the Scots and the English, the, 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 the Welsh and the English and the Irish and the English. So they were the big things back then. Absolutely. So, so my magic moments, uh, of course, Sonny's brace was uh, was one of mine. Snap. Um, Sam Surridge's second goal for Forest uh, against Swansea. They absolutely tortured Swansea. A shame that they couldn't overcome Bournemouth last night. And well done to Bournemouth and well done to Fulham. Both are on their way back to the Premier League. I'm hoping cool. at this time next yeah. year, TC, we're not saying that welcome back to the Championship because that's what we've created at the moment. Teams that are good at going going up and very good at coming back down. Well, Bournemouth, have, the last two games have got two great results, which were Blackburn away and then Forest. Yeah. I mean, if Forest, when when they, uh, Stur- uh, not Sturridge, um, what was the guy's name? Zamora, uh, hit the post, yeah. the crossbar. If that goes in, mm. uh, I'm not saying that Bournemouth still don't go into win. Sam you know, uh, what well, is Sturridge? Sam Sturridge. Sam Sturridge. Sorry, Sam Sturridge. Uh, Tom's correcting me. So, if that goes in, yeah. Bournemouth may still go on to win. But I mean, what an achievement it is produced so far. But it'll mean nothing if unless he goes up, because you know as well as I as I do, I, I've, I've sang his praises. He's missed out twice with Swansea. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm hoping he does it for 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 his sake as much as for his sake, just so he can get onto that next level. But then he's got to keep Forest up there and then build on it from there. Absolutely. And and the problem is, again, I didn't see the first 20 minutes of the game. I was thinking it was kicking off at quarter to eight. It kicked off at seven o'clock. Seven and, o'clock and apparently yeah. they had a nailed on penalty that wasn't given as well. I've yeah. got to say, what a great goal from uh, Bournemouth. Oh, I mean, everyone, yeah. yeah. But again, if I you look at... I mention it, to be honest. Yeah. I'm all about what a great free kick, wasn't it? But if you're looking at it from a defensive point of view, TC, why is no one standing on him? Why is well, no one think, touch I, tight with him? I tell you, guarantee. I can guarantee one thing. Um, I used to stand there, like in positions like that. Yeah. Uh, they always had somebody on you all the time. Absolutely. But you're yeah. right. There's nobody. But I find that strange that they've left yeah. him open. It's, at any level of football, really, isn't it? I couldn't believe it, but I think what they were doing is they were just solely focusing on Billing and the way he was looking at it, the way he was eyeing it up, the way that he would he just got the ball and, right, I'm having this, and he was just solely focused on having a shot. And I think everybody got suckered into that punch and he just rolls it across and uh, Kiefer yeah. Moore put, puts it in the bag. As a Forest player and manager and, yeah. and a fans, you've got to be disappointed in the goal, but Got it. great... Yeah. Uh, Great thinking from uh, Bournemouth players and 
a great finish. Man, it, was did, a good... it did make me laugh. Kiefer Moore, he said, uh, I can't wait. It's great that I'm, uh, I always thought I was going to pre- be a Premier League player. And I, I was listening to you come uh, driving around today and I thought, hang on, son, you know, your team have gone up to the Premier League. Doesn't mean to say you're going with them. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you never know, do you? No, you, you, you don't. You're not good enough, but you're going. Absolutely. <laughs> now we got up. We need some better players. Thank you but for that. can't take that away from him. He's helped Bournemouth get, you know, to, to get promoted to the Premier League. Absolutely, and that's what they were bought in for in January. They spent a lot of money. They really did put all those eggs in the same basket. And fortunately for for Bournemouth, um, they they all hatched and they're in the Premier League. My other magic moment, what I want to give a shout to, is Scott Twine's four goals for MK Dons. I mean, he looks a player. League One Player of the Year as well. And Wickham are entertaining MK Dons tomorrow. What team would you prefer to play? Given that you've got Sunderland and hopefully Wednesday get through and beat Sunderland, who would you prefer to play, Wickham well, or MK? Listen, what I'm going to say to you now, Gabby, mm. I'm no different me than George Best, Alan mm. Upson, Frank Worthington. Yeah, I, I, I'm not bothered who we play. Mm. It's, it's, it's. I that I would never. It doesn't bother me whoever we play, but it does bother a lot of people because yeah, yeah. I, I did it myself with other players. I said, oh, I, mm. I hope they get beat Wickham today, so we could play Wickham in, in to, to so we can get to Wembley, or I hope we can get to final, so we can play them at final, or or, or yeah, who's Wickham playing? You say I'm MK Dons. MK Dons. I think you MK Dons are uh, better footballing team. What, what I will say is this: what I will say is this: this will be the biggest playoff crowd you'll ever see. Absolutely, Sunderland and Sheffield Wednesday, because it's going to be a full house up there. Yeah. And it's going to be a full house at Hillsborough. 35,000 people there uh, for last game of the season to beat uh, Swansea. Um, so that's going, to be a, that's going to be a record. It's going to be a tough game either way. Um, obviously, uh, I think we will win. It doesn't mean we are going to win. That's just me. Yeah. So I'm not bothered who we play. Uh I think I always think that we're going to win. You can't win every game you're playing, but I always thought we could win. So it's, you're asking the wrong person to, to think like that or what, how, how, how I think, yeah. who I'd want to play. It's just not me. I just said, right, can't wait for the game to start. Uh, have they contacted you, Sheffield Wednesday, to get the microphone before the teams run out to sing live, singing the blues, because they still play it at Hillsborough. You posted it up and I shared it. Terry Curran singing the blues, it is synonymous with Sheffield Wednesday, and I think it'd be a great moment as they're coming out, Terry Curran singing it to the boys. Well, they, they, have, they, have, they have two, they have two, they have that um, I.O. Silver lining, which is brilliant. If You've got to yeah. be there when it's when, when it's buzzing. Mm. It is, it doesn't have sound well, but they use that, and all don't the Wolverhampton wonder them. And Villa, yeah. Does Villa use it? Villa use it. I also I have Aston Villa. Yeah, yeah. yeah There's quite really. a few teams that do, but not many do sing in the blues. Ipswich yeah, used to, and Birmingham City did for a certain period. To say to say it's over thirty years ago, forty years ago, it's still going. Still sounds well today, if I'm honest. Sounds fantastic to you. See, it's iconic. I, I would have you on the pitch with that microphone singing it if I was Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, well, mind you, Chantry might not be able to afford you. Things are looking a bit grim. They really do need to get promoted, all joking apart, don't they? Well, I've told you what I've told everybody yeah, all along. This, but I, mm. By the way, you know, Gabby, let, let me put this to you. I don't like to talk about Sheffield Wednesday because everything I say no, always no. seems to go uh, wrong with it. Yeah. Um, they could still get promoted. And find themselves having in points are deducted. Right. Really? Yeah. But well, there's a lot of problems at Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. What's being done? So does it get transferred, say, from League One I, to the Championship because it's but, still the Football League? Because I don't if... know because I, I really don't know <clears throat> yeah. that side of it and how it works. Yes, yeah, I may. How, I think how, it can, might. how can Derby County have points deducted and then and then two months later? Get more points deducted. They went into administration, so they had the the, the fourteen. All oh, right. Put, yeah. So, so they had yeah they had but already. There is, there, yeah. There is there is big problems there, mm. and we could be in we could be in big problems if we don't go up. I know that there we is need been, to go up. We yeah. need to go up. There there've been situations where teams uh, had got promoted. I think Villa were one of them. Had they have not got promoted, 
they would have uh, had a points deduction. But because they did get promoted, then you go into the Premier League, which isn't part of the Football League. Uh, right. Then the gloves uh, stay on. But I think if you do go from League One up to Championship, I think it might. I think the gloves might be off, and uh, who knows? I mean, it's an absolute basket case. I don't know what they're doing. I mean, they do seem to like to uh, find these football clubs, but the uh, teams at the top that are breaking more the... rules than anybody else get away with it, man. How can how can a football club don't get know. fined, and yet the the directors walk away? I know it's incredible, isn't it? Without any punishment, yeah. without losing any money. Yeah, I know. It's you always know, the clubs I, and the fans. If, I know. It's if all happens to Sheffield Wednesday, they'll turn around and say, uh, Chan Savior's lost a lot. That's a load, the biggest load of rubbish yeah. I've, really, I've really been like because whatever money they put in, they get taken out weekly. Yeah. They get paid yeah. before anybody else. Of course they do, yeah, and the loans. And they always, they get it. What they're doing, because they're not borrowing it from these football clubs, they're borrowing it from their companies, and they're, they making a, they're making a bigger profit on it. People fall for it all the time. Of course they do. I mean, you look at Abramovich. I mean, he's, he's, he's loaned Chelsea 1.5 billion. Um, depending on who you listen to or what you read, he wants it back. Or he's, he's going to win. It's, it's 1.5 billion kids in a, a round of drinks. But he buys these places, players. So he, he loans the football club the uh, the money and it's a guarantee of getting at least the same amount back and some of them at load interest onto it as well so happy days kitchen I'd, I'd love to know how much he's had back already me absolutely yeah because they're getting paid in dividends they're getting paid in interest it's like happy days and then the fans think oh brilliant they own our football club and they're doing it because they love us i mean come on let's get real well, kids I can't, you can't knock fans, and I tell you a reason why. Because yeah. uh, if your team's winning major trophies, I mean, look, you want to go to look at these two, Manchester Cities and Chelsea. They've always been great clubs, haven't they? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Up until Abramovich come in there, you know, the last time they won the league title, mm -hmm. which was the first division, was 1955 when I was born. Yeah, I think Manchester City uh, won it in sixes. I'm not quite. I can't remember now. Seventies. Are you down in that cellar again? No, I've just come to the toilet for a week. <laughs> so I've just come back out again. Can't now. you hold no. the phone in one hand and hold it with the other? Uh, <laughs> no, I just lay... No, I shouldn't talk like this. Anyway, to get that. <laughs> you have to go uh, and hands free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were we on about then? Uh, well, we were on about Chelsea Bramovich in Chelsea and, and he bank. flew over Stamford Bridge, didn't he? Because he was going to buy Tottenham. And then like, oh, what's that down there? I think I'll buy that club instead. Well, they would they would in massive trouble if um, yeah. Abramovich mm -hmm. doesn't buy. It. But again, they got into champion. But did they get into Champions League? I think they did. I'm not too sure in the first year, but um, certainly very yeah. shortly he made massive inroads and yeah. turned Chelsea around almost instantly, didn't they, Abramovich? Yeah. Well, I mean, but they were just going a decent side together. Then they, I yeah, mean, they when you start to buy players like Robin and all these, you know, some of the mm -hmm. bought some app and Duff, they bought some absolutely great, great players, didn't they, over absolutely the years? Absolutely too. So, Book Corner in association with myfootballbooks.com. We just recorded our most recent uh, podcast with Andy from My Football Books, and it's all on our socials now, so you can listen to two hours of, uh, and well, hour and a half of, of me and Andy talking football books, and our special guest, our author of the month, uh, Jill Morris, so it's out now on all the social Spotify or you know Apple etc 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 um, and the first book that uh, we're going to be talking about tonight is The Big Fix TC which is uh, Jill Morris's book a uh, lovely lady it's her first venture into writing football books and it's uh, it's a novel it's a thriller right good because at the end of the day again like I've always said you've but you've got you've, you've got your an hand in all different corners, haven't you? With with books. Yeah. Uh, yesterday on football and how football started and, and these old great players, you know, by by paying into uh, our um, podcast, they get all sorts. Absolutely. Of music. There's everything what goes with it. So and it's a good education and and it's some great people on this. Um, uh, on, on on this pod, what you get onto the podcast, uh, and the fantastic, the fantastic uh, interviews you do. Absolutely, well, I'm a big lover of you, Gabby. If I'm honest, I, I mean, I, I say it as it is. If I didn't think if, if if I didn't think you were any good, I, 
you know, Gabby, I'm not doing this no more. It's crap. But I, I, I can, I can listen to you, ask people questions, even when you're talking to me. I look, I just listen. I just love listening to your voice. Well, I used to love to watch you play, T. So you playing is far better than my voice will ever be. I actually don't particularly like my voice, but I do like the sound of other people's voices, and I love interviewing them. And we always do uh, biographies or autobiographies or historical content in Book Corner. But this one is a novel. We don't do many novels, but this one is a fantastic. I'm going to be reading it. I did say to Jill, she kindly sent me a copy of the book. And I said, look, I've got hundreds of football books that I haven't read. I will get round to reading it one day. And all the very best going forward. Tremendous presentation. Listen. There's a couple of calling cards in there. It, it looks fantastic. So uh, all the usual outlets, guys, uh, and that purchase I have the book. more chance of man managing England than you reading all them books. Because you have, <laughs> must have that many books. You've got more books than the library. <laughs> I certainly have got a few, and one that I do want in my library, TC, uh, in the shadow of Ben Bulban. Now, I hadn't got a clue where Ben Bulban is and was, but it's the story of Dixie Dean's time at Sligo Rovers, so I'm guessing that's where Sligo Rovers come from, Ben Bulban, although it might not be because I don't really know. And the book's been written by yeah, Paul Little, so that looks to be a fantastic Sligo read. Sligo Rovers is Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, it so, is, yeah. He yeah, went over there and played over there for three or four months. Got a little town or a little city, whatever it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's got a lovely cover. It, um, it's inviting me in. I'm going to buy the book In the Shadow of Ben Bulban. We did mention it on the uh, podcast with, with Andy as well. And Dixie Dean, what an absolute legend of a player. And when he finished there at, uh, at Everton, he went over and scored loads of goals for, I think it was three or maybe four months that he, he played for Sligo Rovers. I mean, what a signing that would have been, wouldn't it? Can imagine it, couldn't you? In the pubs. We're going to bring Dixie Dean. Yeah, of course you are. No, we're going to bring. Hello. Dixie, how are you? <laughs> but in those days, it did happen, didn't it? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't yeah. happen, as much, does it? No, you know, I mean, they, it can't. They earn that much money now, they don't have to keep playing. No, and I think that, that some of them, you know, play football because, you know, they're good at it. And, the, you know, some of them aren't particularly in love with the game. I suppose that was always the case, that some players are really disciples of the game of football and some players just played because they were decent at it. Look at Bobby Moore. He had to go to Oxford uh, City to, to, in his first job, I think. I'm sure his, his first job were Oxford City before he went to South End. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're looking at somebody what's played over 100 times for England. Absolutely. You know, won a World Cup. Won only, won, won, that's his only trophy we've won. Yeah. You know, um, yet the FA, and we spoke about this last week, mm -hmm. never uh, recognised his achievements at all, really, did they? No, they never, they're for, for whatever reason, and we can only second guess. I think there's guess. a statue there now, but that's only because of, uh, of demand by player uh, fan power. Absolutely, and, and I think the same at West Ham as the, the Bobby Moore stand, isn't there? And, you know, there the may be a, a statue or not. I've not been to the London uh, Stadium. But Alan Hudson always says, they'll put a statue up when you pass away but they won't do nothing for you while you're alive. And while we're talking about Udi, there was a piece in the Telegraph today about um, his battles with the English FA. He's trying to get all his records expunged from the uh, the English Football Association for the way that he was treated all those years ago. Being banned by Sir well, Alf Ramsey for three years and then Reeve overlooking him constantly. So Al's no lover of England. He used to be. I mean, he played eight uh, under-23 games, 10 in total, two were abandoned, but it was bad weather that they were abandoned for. So he played um, eight under-23 games and two full international games for a player of Alan Hudson's ability. He's absolutely scandalous. And uh, as I say, he's got a battle with the FA now to have his records expunged. And there was a piece in the, uh, the Daily Telegraph today. I just before you, before you phone tonight, I uh, his son Al, his young Al, yeah, uh, sent me the article. I just read, I just finished reading it. Mm. Uh, well, I'm telling a lie. I, I just read it, but I just finished writing about it because I posted up on on my wall, not on the current view wall, on my wall. Are you going to post it on the current view as well? Cause we, I let, will do. Yeah, let's yeah, get on there I as will. well. I'll, I'll post it up on there yeah. as well. Um, but you know, when I look at it. 
you know, I mean, I, on the cover view this week, I, I put a midfield trio, trio of Ball, Hudson and Curry. Yeah. There's plenty more I could have put, but as mm. a manager, you, you, you have to you have to pick what you think's right. But as, as an England manager, if, if if Alan weren't doing it or Curry weren't doing it, Ball weren't doing it, I wouldn't be frightened as a manager to say, right, you've had your chance. Yeah. Start playing. Uh, I'm I'm leaving you out. Start playing a little bit better, and you'll be back in. Mm. Great managers have got the uh, so the charisma to be able to do it, and, and, and the great players will look at this. Well, hang on a bit. He has been fair with me. I will uh, look what he's been trying to tell me. What I've not been doing right. Mm. Oh, but what, what, what I've uh, is is my life right? Is this right? Is that right? But it, it's it's such a shame. I mean, I I, I saw it all first time. I saw it all first time because I was a young player myself. Uh, to see players like that because I told you I, I remember that name now Tony um, bloody hell I, I, I said it all the bloody day to myself the Sheffield United reporter used to write in the star okay. and he said to me and he told me about uh, we were going down a post we were talking about he said well, why would you pick that type of team mm. right, now this is because I'm 10 years older than Guardiola that's because yeah. they wouldn't give the ball away mm. What they're doing at Manchester City, Ball, the Upton and Curry would have done that. Absolutely. Right? McFarlane, Todd, great players. Great players. Mm. Came out with the ball. David Nish, great left back. Yeah. Gary Stevens, I could have picked Vin Anderson or, or Gary Stevens. Mm. But I went for Gary because he was even more of an athlete uh, than, than, um, than Viv. And what I mean by that, technically great players, both were great players. But Viv weren't the best trainer. Gabby was an absolutely unbelievable trainer. Yeah. You, was you know, cross as a uh, model. And pro. then you know you got I, I picked Charlie George. Um, Charlie George. Uh, George Best and Giggsy. Yeah. I want players what can go past people. Yeah. It's got pace to go past people. You know, and uh, Tony, it'll come to me in a bit, but. Uh, they don't give the ball away. Mm. And when they pass the ball, they pass with quality yeah. and accuracy. Yeah. You know, and that's what I've always looked at that as as, as, as being a manager. People said to me, why did you go into money? Well, I did at Google. And it, it didn't backfire on me. I did well. And the chairman made a mess of it yeah. by saying that, you know, um, we're going to get, we've got to get rid of players. I said, mm. why? He said, because we owe him a thousand pounds. I said, how do you mean he owe him a thousand pounds each? Mm. I said, our wage bill is 750. I said, to him, uh, I've not taken, first thing a manager would do at that level is take 200 quid out for himself. Yeah. I didn't take a penny out. Mm. And I paid for tea, toast, beans and toast, scrambled egg on toast, coffees. And we used to play like in, in uh, Carnarvon and uh, Rill and all them, yeah. banging. They've got the own league now, that Welsh league. Yeah. But I was managing goal. Uh, and as Gates went from um, what 50, 75 to two hundred and fifty, and in some in some cases we got seven hundred people there, yeah. Yeah. you know. And we did, we, we were the only team to be unbeaten. Mm. I'd only been nine games, we won eight, and we'd lost one. And the chairman said to me, "Can you come through?" I, went, I go through. He's put, got a bottle of champagne on the table. I said, "Well, we've already played nine games, Mr. Chairman." He said, no, I've got some bad news. I said, what? He said, uh, we've got to get rid of players. I said, why? I said, you tell me we could go up. We've only played nine games. Mm. He said, we owe me a £1,000 each. I said, have you done that? He said, I agreed, if, I agreed a, a bonus system with them. I didn't expect us winning. I said, you think I've come here not to win games? You know, and then I'm, I've never really had a chance to manage a league club. Mm. You know, so... I'm not saying I'd have been any good of it. I might have been the worst manager there's ever been. Mind you, that's but I've picked his bloody decent TC. I mean, what a side that would be. But Who was your goalie, by the way? Southall. Yeah, oh, right, yeah, yeah. Southall. Yeah. The best I've ever played with. Mm. Better than Schultz for me. And I like Schultz. But without a question of a doubt. I mean, uh, Banks, what a world-class goalkeeper, as you know. But, you know, when you look at it, it's... It's just in that era, in a sense, that Nevin, Nevin Giggs would have missed out on playing with Curry and them. But, it's, you know, it's a little bit of modern, modern, not too far, too too back. But I want to see people play with a tempo. I want to see play people have confidence. And it's like, oh, else, if I pass that ball to Giggs, I know he's not going to lose it. Yeah. 
If I pass the ball, if Alan Nutton passes the ball to Tony Curry, he's not going to lose it. Mm. But you know, the biggest thing is about all that team, Udi wouldn't be frightened to play it to Gabby Stevens. No, Gabby Stevens, because I've seen it. A lot mm -hmm. of players, they won't pass the certain